to our episode of Super Reaction Bros. I'm Chris. I'm Christopher. I'm Jason. So we're dealing with another cinema sins. This time for everything wrong with Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Now, the was, Tim Burton one. I think they got that. No, I'm just saying. Oh, okay. For those who... Okay, yeah. that, Okay, thank you. Um, Now, this... Was this a request or are you, is this one we're just doing? This is doing. Okay, making sure. Cause we, I, if it was, that would be telling you right away. I know. I, I'm forgetful. I'm very forgetful. I haven't made yes. that before. So anyways, um, Charlie and Chocolate Factory. Um, I thought it was good. Um, it doesn't live up to what the original Willy Wonka one was. But I thought it was good. It was the, after reading. I've actually read the original book. After I watched the movie, I actually read the original book. Um, and it's pretty spot on, except for the stuff with his, um, father. Yeah. With, with Willy Wonka's father. It's pretty spot on to what the, the book was. The book was pretty much, because this yeah. is the one, this, this one was pretty much as close as you were going to get to the book, besides the original, uh, one with, uh, oh, Gene Wilder, pretty much. Yeah. One of my, one of my favorite actors I, but of all I, time. But I thought it was, I thought Charlie Chocolate Factory movie was good. Yeah. I can see why they didn't do a sequel. I've read, the, actually read the sequel to this story, and it involves going to space, meatball-shaped aliens, gigantic meatball-shaped aliens, de-aging, re-aging, and kind of going to hell. Yeah, it went all kinds of sideways on that one there. Yeah, this was... It felt like more of an epilogue. It felt more like an epilogue than a sequel to the book. Yeah, that's what it was. So yeah. let's just dive right into this for Cinema Sins, Everything Wrong with Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So here we go. This movie exists. 26 Aww. seconds and snow goes. Man, can this beginning be any more Harry Potter? <laughs> Over three and a half minutes of confection, conception, opening credits. If I wanted to know how chocolate was born, I'd take a trip to Hershey, Pennsylvania. This is a story of an ordinary little boy named Charlie Bucket. Wonka Asian. This Charles Dickens meets Dr. Seuss house appears to be run down, except it was obviously built this way. So there's no way this door exists if it's not specifically designed to go into the store frame. Evening, Buckets. Evening. Movie pays homage to the original film's four-person bed. An awesome image, but entirely impractical. Where did Grandpa Joe and Grandpa George even put their legs? And do we even want to know? I saw Willy Wonka with my own two eyes. I used to work for him, you know. You did. Charlie had been building this exact scale replica of the f***ing chocolate factory for who knows how long. But Grandpa never brought up that he it's worked true. there until now. Willy Wonka began with a single store on Cherry Street. Grand position. <laughs> I'm gonna guess that Wonka somehow bypassed the FDA when concocting his candy stores. The man was a genius. If he can do the <laughs> we've seen so far, I think the word Grandpa Joe is looking for is wizard or based on the way Depp plays the character, possibly Satan? Satan? Grandpa, don't make it gross. I'm with Charlie. Why would Grandpa Joe share that part of the story? I don't think getting riled up in the four poster is a good idea. But <laughs> Mr. Wonka was right, of course. Soon after this, there came a very hot day with a boiling sun. So Prince Pondicherry thought this wouldn't happen? Were there no hot days while Wonka was making the palace? And how did this conversation of whether or not the prince intended to eat or live in the palace not come up in the whole time it was being worked on? They began sending in spies to steal the secret recipes. I'm not the most up-to-date on my sweet treat spycraft, but in general, wouldn't you rendezvous somewhere slightly further away from yeah, the it's true. <laughs> that you're spying on? Fickle Grouper started making an ice cream that would never melt. So wait, the not melting ice cream was actually invented and sold? Then Grandpa Joe shouldn't be talking about it as if it's some big revelation. But then, who's running the machines? Nobody knows, Charlie. It certainly is a mystery. Not as big of a mystery as how no one ever f***ing told Charlie any of these stories That's before. That's true! I'd give anything in the world just to go in one more time and see what's become of that amazing factory. Grandpa Joe was foreshadowing so hard right here, he might start smelling toast. <laughs> uh, they just eat and go to bed. No one gets bathroom breaks. All four of them are bedpanning it. Nothing's impossible, Charlie. See now, character suddenly becomes lucid, just in time to give sobering words of encouragement cliche. Also, sure. this all seems like strange motivation for something that hasn't even happened yet. Charlie's family seems to be creating this goal for Charlie to get in Wonka's factory even before the golden ticket news has been announced. Indeed, that very night... Charlie died from severe hypothermia from a gaping hole in the roof. It's <laughs> <laughs> 
I'd take a good Danny Elfman score as much as the next guy, but sometimes I get the feeling he's just been using variations on the Men in Black score for every movie since 1987. <laughs> so dozens of people just happen to be converging on this poll at the exact same time? Were they all just there for the every second Thursday telephone poll snow <laughs> happen to find this message from Walker? <laughs> the people of the world. The world? So did the delivery boys ride those Vespas around the entire world to post these notices in one night? What kind of Santa sleigh bull is that? Also, where did that massive staff come from? They're not Oompa Loompas, but Wonka trusted them to deliver all these notices. And the chocolates with the golden tickets, even though he swore off humanity years ago. One of these children shall receive a special prize beyond anything you could ever imagine. You're giving them the factory, right? I think you may be selling my imagination short, Wonka, because I totally just pulled off imagining that. Candy bars may be anywhere, in any shop, in any street, in any town, in any country, in the world. As long as the five winners can speak English for the movie's sake. Ha ha, no. I get it. Kid's fat and loves chocolate. But you're telling me his he mother fat. will clean the chocolate off his face before he goes in front of the cameras? That man spoils his daughter, and no good ever comes from spoiling a child like that. Someone hasn't been keeping up with the Kardashians. Oh, oh. Together, we're 381 years old. We don't wait. Damn, that was either some quick math by Grandpa Joe, or he's been creepily monitoring this total for a while now. What's the point of this tension-filled fake-out reveal? Is there a single human watching this movie that doesn't know that Bucket Boy is going to eventually get a ticket? Yeah, it's true. Let's check the manufacturing dates, offset by weather, and the derivative of the Nikkei Index. Hi, and I'll give you manufacturing dates and weather. But Nikkei Index? What does the Tokyo stock market have to do with anything? <laughs> and regarding Mike's strategy, the bar with the ticket would still have to randomly end up in Denver, right? You are grateful to but... Jesus, does Mr. Buckets have Beats by Dre sound canceling abilities in his hands? Charlie should still be able to hear at least some of Grandpa George's tapestry of profanity. Oh, for the love of Roald Dahl, how many times do we need to go through this disappointment nonsense? We spent the first 30 minutes of this movie on golden ticket fakeouts, poverty born, and being narrated at. Can we get to some chocolate factoring already? <laughs> When one worthless scrumptious fudge man had to like peace. Charlie finds ten bucks in the snow, and his first thought is to buy a third candy bar. Even after overhearing that the last ticket was already found? No worries, Charlie. You've got a family of seven in a one-room shack, eating cabbage water for every meal. But you go right ahead and buy some more chocolate. <laughs> oh, God. This whole puppet carousel is the perfect metaphor for this movie. A fake plastic reproduction that's annoyingly loud and garish and ends up completely going down in flames. <laughs> Tim Burton obviously decided the 1971 version of this story didn't have enough nightmare fuel. Isn't that just magnificent? Where exactly did Wonka come from if the entrance to the factory is right in front of them? Also, wouldn't there be at least a murmur from the crowd behind the gate from seeing Wonka for the first time in ages? Good morning, Starshine. The Earth says hello. If you listen closely with the right kind of ears, somewhere in the middle of that line, you can hear the exact moment the world had had enough of Johnny Depp's <laughs> oh. And the rest of you must be there for parents. Yeah. <laughs> Moms and dads. Dad? Papa? I cannot begin to tell you how quickly and forcefully I would remove children from this man's <laughs> <laughs> Can I have some chocolate? Sure. Then you should have bought some. But why? You're literally in a chocolate factory. Pretty sure that was the one thing you didn't need to bring. Also, the movie is deeply committed to us hating every single character that isn't named Bucket. I don't care how much you like good old Charlie. That is a lot of assholery to sit through. Come with me, and you'll see, see in a world of shitty imitation. Would you like my meadow? Try some of my grass. I am guessing there were many involved in this head trip of a movie that did indeed try some of Walter's grass. <laughs> you can eat the grass. Of course you can. But would you want to? They've been walking all over that I understand they had to make these kids unlikable, but Tim Burton went way over the top with this shit. I mean, if you're gonna remake this shit, why not give these characters a tiny bit of nuance instead of doubling down on the assholitude? Oompa Loompas. Imported. Direct from Loompa Land. What the fuck would Wonka have done if he didn't happen upon a sudden and conveniently subservient workforce? He'd already fired his entire staff, right? Movie wants us to believe that as fastidious and I don't know whatever's going on with Willy Wonka, he traveled through a fucking jungle. Orange swaddlers and snozz wangers and those terrible wicked wang doodles. What are the nicknames for my penis? I'll take gold actors named Johnny for 500. Sword <laughs> swallowing. I went to Loompa Land looking for exotic new flavors. Instead, I found the Oompa Loompas. Man, I totally wouldn't have believed that these Oompa Loompas existed if I didn't have this completely necessary backstory. <laughs> I'm more willing to buy that Wonka learned the Loompa language and could communicate with them than being able to acquire all the passports and documentation it would take to get them back to his That's factory. That's true. Hey, little boy! My chocolate must be untouched by human hands. That doesn't seem like a great marketing strategy. Also, why the hell didn't Wonka tell them that from the beginning? There was one f***ing rule. Augustus, 
Oh, the other thing is that they went with more of the original versions of the songs from the book yeah. in this one. Where did they find their love for musical theater? Why are they wearing full body latex uniforms? And why do they write songs like a fifth grader trying to figure out what rhymes with poop? Look, Lily, you're the one that wanted to give the backstory for these guys, so now I need to know. If I know my high school physics, then I probably don't, when you have an overweight child object stuck in your vacuum, isn't the pressure above the blockage, not below? So why would it be spraying out like this all the way down here? So did the song and dance number fix the situation? Because the Oompa Loompas otherwise did jack That's true. I didn't say that all seemed rather rehearsed. But they knew it was going to happen. As if we needed more reasons to hate them, these snozwangers would be excellent. <laughs> yeah, these snozwangers. Why don't you take Mrs. Gloop up to the fudge room, okay? Is it just me, or does taking Mrs. Gloop up to the fudge room sound like a new euphemism for <laughs> Wakanda forever. Wakanda <laughs> forever. <laughs> They're still going on the tour after all the Augustus Gloop went down. These people deserve whatever saw-like torture device falls on their heads. Human hands can't touch the chocolate, but the bottom of the boat is fine. As we're told several times, the waterfall churning is what makes the chocolate unique. So this is definitely introducing an unnecessary variable. God, why does everything in this movie take forever to happen? Look, 1% of Tim Burton's imagination would kick the shit out of the rest of the world in an imagination battle. But this seems a little <laughs> overboard, even for him. Sure, Wonka would have an extravagant boat, but wouldn't he pick something that fit better with a the theme? What the f*** does a dragon have to do with any of this? The movie's antagonist in a post-2000 rehash gets an origin story even though it doesn't need one and no one asked for one cliche. <laughs> God, also, a it's completely counterintuitive that this movie is called Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, when it's much more Wonka-centric than the first one. I know it's supposed to be a more faithful adaptation of the book. Well, it's, it's not, not even in the book we're talking about his father. They'd get stuck in your braces, wouldn't they? Oh man, I had to drag poor Christopher Lee into this, didn't I? Also, of course, Willy Wonka's dad was a dentist who never let him have candy. Wonka's backstory was apparently written by Admiral Obvious. Also, also, why the f*** did Count Dooku saw her mom let Willy go off trick-or-treating in the first place? If your candy burns like this, and I hate to be the one to tell you this... That's true! Bad candy it's weird! It's cream. And we can add animal cruelty for the sake of the growing list of reasons this factory would have been shut down ages ago. These are everlasting guff stoppers. You can suck on it all year, and it'll never get any smaller. Also known as the everlasting choke hazard. <laughs> I'd rather you didn't. There's still one or two things that are... Oh, come on, Wonka. We all know what you're up to. You put a stick of chewing gum right in front of the chewing gum champion. This whole thing is a big batch of entrapment mixed with a heaping helping of child endangerment, and you're enjoying every second of it. That is one stretchy sweatsuit. Someone call Bruce Banner's stylist, because I think we found the material for his next outfit. That's true. I swear to the great gobstopper in the sky, the music in this movie makes the music in the Lorax. Regardless of how exaggerated her look is, that's still Violet's body. The Oompa Loompas could be doing some serious damage by jumping on it. We gotta squeeze all that juice out of her immediately. Given Wonka's look and general demeanor, I'm thinking this environment is the only place where he could say this sentence and not be immediately arrested. What's the special prize if you get it? The best kind of prize is a surprise. <laughs> the problem with Johnny Depp's portrayal is that it takes the beautiful, beleaguered, but eccentric frustration of Gene Wilder's Wonka and turns it into nothing more than a case of a sociopath with severe arrested development. A take which steals all the joy of Wonka finding someone to finally take over the factory and instead just makes us want to alert the proper authorities. Oh, what, what? I think that one's got a bad name. That's why we nicknamed him Lance. Ruka. <laughs> ah, Lance. <laughs> Little girl? Jeez, this movie's like watching a slow speed car chase after popping a couple thallium. It's always fun to see a kid's movie turn into a straight horror film. Seriously, bring on Squirrel Spiria. At least it would be interesting. <laughs> sure, most of these kids are awful, but these parents are worse. They're incapable and uninterested it's in helping true. the kids out. Mr. Salt can't jump over the railing and run down the stairs to save his daughter from some squirrels. For the sole purpose of this visual gag, Wonka was able to procure an overlarge steak from Looney Tunes land. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fudge Mountain. Is it just me, or does welcome to Fudge Mountain sound like a euphemism for, you know what, maybe it's a euphemism. This is the public hospital in Burn Center. It's relatively new. Come on, movie. You've already established how weird Wonka is by the fact that he has random flashbacks and likes to play murder children. This is just unfunny overkill. Hello, Doris. So the only female Oompa Loompas at the factory work in the front office? I knew Wonka was crazy, but sex is too. Candy doesn't have to have a point. That's why it's candy. Nice try, Mr. Burton. You're not covering up all your nonsensical bull that easily. Your movie still has to have an engaging story. Candy is a waste of time. As is yet another flashback when we already get the point. Looks like New Line let Christopher Lee keep those Saruman powers. <laughs> I'm gonna figure out. Go ahead. Even if we go by the assumption that Wonka set all this up ahead of time, 
there are several things that still have to fall into place. Augustus has to be left on his own and start drinking out of and fall into the river. Violet has to take the gum bait, which might be the easiest one, but it still has to go exactly as planned. Baruka has to be interested enough in the squirrels to go down and get herself thrown down the chute. And Mike has to ask to pick a room, it happens to be the TV room, and he has to get the idea to transport himself. Wouldn't it be easier to just get them all in the factory and have them decide who's the last man <laughs> the Joker did in the Dark Knight? Incorrect inertia alert! When this elevator shoots forward, everyone should fall backwards, not into the wall in front of them. Cool, you invented teleportation. And also, apparently, levitation? How is this Johnny Depp's ego-sized candy bar floating? Well, why would I want to send a person? They don't taste very good at all. For those keeping track at home, that is the third cannibalism joke <laughs> in this movie. All of which were the same basic punchline and the same paucity of funny. Calm down, Mike. I think Mr. Wonka knows what he's talking about. Really? Mr. TV can say that with a straight face? Unharmed? What are you talking about? Little known fact, Warner Brothers originally hired Edgar Wright to direct this sequence, but <laughs> went a different way to create the only one left now. You mean you're the only one? I don't blame Wonka for not realizing this, because I sure as hell forgot Charlie was part oh. of the movie. And we mustn't dilly or dally, because we have an enormous number of things to do before the day's out. But luckily for us, we have the great glass elevator to speed things up. I wish the creators of this movie had a glass elevator then, because this movie took so little time and had so much that was interesting. Sorry, strike all of that. Reverse it. Reverse it. It's amazing <laughs> to think that 12 years before this, Steven Spielberg made us believe dinosaurs were walking on the earth. But Tim Burton can't make us believe that a little girl is doing flips down some stairs. Also, it's great to get confirmation that the kids are okay. And the only residual issue they'll have to deal with is their horribly mutilated bodies. Uh, you got some Star Wars in my Willy Wonka movie. <laughs> Daddy, I want to find that elevator. What proper young Brit would say elevator? It's a lift, dear Veruca. You want a flying glass lift. You must be the boy's... Parents? Yeah. That. All right, that manufactured and unnecessary Wonka backstory still hasn't been resolved. Guess we've got another 15 minutes of Fudge Mountain to wade through. I had the strangest revelation. I mean, there's still time. <laughs> 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 I watched over them after I was gone. I realized in that moment, I must find a hair. Hey, movie, we'll handle the ham-handed puns over here, damn it. <laughs> Thanks, dinner, Willie. Oh, yes, please. And this movie wraps up more cleanly and wholesome than a f***ing episode of Growing Pains. You smell like peanuts. I love peanuts. Holy f***, Grandma Georgina's lucid. Did Wonka also invent the cure for dementia? So they built an exact replica of their whole house in the factory? What kind of sense does that make? And don't give me that cheap bull about how candy doesn't even have to make sense. It's their In the book, he, I believe he moves the entire house into... Yeah, it's the factory. Yeah. What do we got? Root uh, canal, and by the looks of those x-rays, it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I love grapes. I love lamb. Baby, 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 baby. 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 Welcome to Fudge Mountain. Would you please give a warm welcome to John Redcorn in Big Mountain Fudge Cake? <laughs> I um okay the music um they took more they used the music more from the book. Yeah, the actual they the, the lyrics more from the book. The lyrics from the book. Um, I they didn't really focus on his father at all. He was just doing it like Willy Wonka was in the original, which mm -hmm. was he was just finding a kid to run his factory after yeah, he's gone. That's all he was. That's doing. all it was. They had the they had the firing. The firing was not part of the original book. Um, I try to remember other stuff. Uh, yeah, it wraps up pretty much like the like the original Willy Wonka one, except for a fact that like it wasn't that you lose good. Day, sir, you know, yeah, that. Hey, there wasn't that scene. Good day, sir. It basically ended like this movie, minus the Chris Release stuff. He's the last one standing, he wins. And yeah. That's pretty much it. The rest is just wrapping up everything, and then the sequel picks up from that moment on. Yeah, that forward on, and that's when you get the uh, giant, space stuff. Uh. I think Johnny Depp was his own kind. I would, I honestly do prefer Gene Wilder overall, but I think China was do, trying to do his own. He, he was trying to do his own version, and he did a decent job. Even though I, you know, we grew up with the original Charlie Chuck Factory, it's still one of my favorite. But don't get me movies, wrong, movies pretty much. But th I know what you're getting at. This is still a good movie, pretty well, much. Well, don't. Well, I was gonna say was though. This, and the difference is. Johnny Depp was a bit more like the book version of Wonka overall. Yeah, yeah it like, was. Like, he wasn't like a philosophical candy man. Yeah. Or he's, no, he was wacky, uh, eccentric, over the top. And except for the creepy, like, murder-esque, like, 
Arrested Development style issues, he was pretty much that in the book. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so for closest to the book would be Johnny Depp's version. Yeah, exactly. The closest design wise would be Gene Wilder's version. Yeah, the way design wise, yeah, where the way, way he, he was dressed. dressed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Charlie's pretty much just as bland in the books. He, yeah, he is. He's pretty much the only person you're rooting for, only kid you're rooting for. The rest are supposed to be assholes, like you said. Yeah. Uh, but they got most of the other ring. Oh, yeah, they about, did, 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 did. about this, like, all the fudge puns, all the fudge bathroom puns, like, really? You don't think it's a bit punny, you know? And he's like, you gotta be interested in the fact that the parents don't do anything. And the same goes for a book, they don't do anything. No, they don't. Yeah, but you still get to see what becomes of them. That's one thing they add in the, this version of the movie is that you do get to see what becomes of the kids afterwards. Yeah. Like the girl becomes essentially becomes a contortionist. <laughs> the kid becomes the like, uh, and like Veruca and her father are just covered in trash. Yeah, that too. Yeah, um, but it nailed everything for the most part. I still, I still enjoy this movie. I, but if, overall, if I had to choose, it would be the original one. Yeah. Time yeah. has changed. Originally, I thought this one over the original, but. After a while. I love the original because the music was so very beautifully done. Yeah. And I still it still gets to me. I still love the the moment they walk into that factory pretty much and then they start singing that song. That's yeah. a song that still gets to me every time because it's like it's just a beautiful song. And I like it. Come this is one. Come with me and you'll see the little world with shitty imitations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one yeah, this one for most I agree with this one and like I said, movie I still think movie's fine. Yeah, same here. So other than that, if you need a channel, you can hit the like button. If you want to talk some more about stuff like this, comment down below. If you want to share this around, share it around. And if you like it's just a little bit more than anybody else when it comes to talking about cinema sins, hit the subscribe button down below and hit the bell icon as well. Let us know what you guys thought of this cinema sins. Do you agree with the majority of what they said? Um, even if you never read the book and you, you agree with the, almost everything they said here, um, what's your thoughts? Maybe you, you think they may have missed something. Let us know in the comments down below. Put down what you thought of our reaction overall. But most importantly, thank you for watching. So until next time, I'm Chris. I'm Christopher. And this was a very chocolate-filled episode of SRB. See you later. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to check out your previous reactions, as well as our other shows, click the playlist down below. And if you want to check us out in the social universe, you can check us out on Twitter. As well as Stardust. At Super React Bros.